The presidency announced over the weekend that Pindila Balene, who is the director general in the presidency, received death threats in her mailbox at home. In fact, she got a bullet and a letter telling her what to do. So this morning, we're discussing the vulnerability of the country's state security. What can be done to ensure South Africa's security is not compromised? DA Member of Parliament, Diane Kolobana, joins us this morning. Diane, it's great to speak to you on what is an incredibly worrying story, receiving a death threat in your mailbox at home. On the face of it, what's your response? Yes, I think uh, as we see things hotting up, um, not only moving towards the ANC Congress, uh, but, but generally with the NPA starting to, to dig deep into the revelations of the Zondo Commission and, and other cases, we're suddenly starting to see successes. Um, it, it's inevitable that these kind of threats will come up. Um, certainly uh, very few people, um, certainly journalists, um, and, and politicians, I've certainly received umpteen death threats. It happens, uh, but this one is particularly personal. Um, I, I know that, that people, for example, the construction site invaders will go to a manager and say, I know where you, where you work, I know where your children go to school, I know where your home is, uh, to scare them away so they can take over the jobs. And this is exactly along those lines. I know your car, I know your children, I know the schools, I know your house. So it's very scary, and let's hope that the powers that be in terms of security are on top of it. Um, but <clears throat> every time I imagine that it seems to me that the issues around state security and, and crime intelligence and defense intelligence have died down, and the leaks have died down, uh, because there's been a veritable flood of them over the last few years, um, something pops up again. And, I mean, this business of... <laughs> Cyril Ramaphosa, having, having saved uh, Arthur Fraser when, when he was chucked out of um, state security for after cancelling Intelligence Inspector General uh, Dr. Dean for his top security clearance, um, he handed him the DG job at Correctional Services, earning a fortune. And the highlight of that tenure was releasing Jacob Zuma the day before that term came to an end. Now, as a thank you, he's turned around and laid charges against the very man who kept him employed. I mean, it's an absolute soap opera, what's going on. Uh, a bizarre situation, but death threats against people um, have to be taken extremely seriously. And I trust her, her people around her, the people who will be assigned to protect her, are top notch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because the bottom line is we can't take it, as you say, we can't take it lightly, can we, Diane? Yeah. We see what happens to people who are trying to get to the bottom of corruption in various provinces. And of course, whistleblowers like Bobita Diokaran come to mind. Yes, indeed. I mean, the fact that you can have a top cop like Kenya killed in, in the Western Cape, you can, it, it, nobody is safe. Uh, I, I remember uh, General Boyson when he was, he was suspended um, and when people realized he was, he was going to be exonerated, um, there were death threats. I announced them on the podium in Parliament. And he was driving around with a gun between his knees. He wouldn't let his family drive with him. He said it's very difficult to keep a person safe, um, even if you have a, a crew around them, they can be taken out. So it, it, it is to be taken extremely seriously. And I really hope that they move her somewhere safe and get to the bottom of it very, very quickly. It speaks to um, what you mentioned <coughs> in, in, your first, in your first answer, Diane, around the months that are to come insofar as the, the ANC's December elective conference is concerned. Um, the release of the final part of the state capture inquiry report is also expected uh, in the coming weeks. We like to call it silly season in the industry when all manner of things wow. begin to happen at this time of year. But, of course, it's a lot more serious than that. What are you hoping are the measures that will be taken in the months to come? Because we've still got, what, seven months, six, seven months until the elective conference in December? Yes, indeed. Uh, look, one expects every time a person seems to be succeeding – or someone else wants their job. Um, something foul mm -hmm. will come mm -hmm. up. Um, it really will. Uh, it, it happens everywhere in politics. 
specifically. And and now we, we suddenly have this bombshell about the president. Um, and, of course, the question is not, as he quite sweetly said, that he took taxpayers' money. It, it's was there money laundering involved? Uh, was money laundering reported, perhaps? Were, did someone help the fugitives escape? Was state security involved? Was currency uh, law violated, perhaps? Um, were state resources used to, to stop the Namibian investigation? There are many questions that have nothing to do with the South African taxpayer, per se. Um, so, but, but this story, if indeed there's any anything in it, um, Fraser's been sitting on it for a couple of years. So he's waited. He's, he's, he's waited till exactly the time. Um, I think everybody knew he was in the whole Zuma camp situation. Um, and he's, he's, he's sat on it, as I believe he sits on files about many, many, many people, mm. uh, which is quite possibly why he got the correctional services job. But we will wait to see um, the fact that I laid criminal charges against him uh, earlier in the year uh, might might be that he's feeling the heat there that for the first time they're taking it seriously because I have laid charges before and they disappeared and John Steenhazen as the then chief whip of the Democratic Alliance laid charges and those disappeared so maybe it's third time lucky but um, it, it's an open secret that that Hundreds of millions, if not a billion, was looted through state security uh, during that tenure. And to, as far as we know, there could still be looting going on because it is an extraordinarily difficult entity to do oversight mm. over. Mm. He knows where the bodies are buried, as that disturbing adage goes. Uh, the nine Absolutely. wasted years, we refer to uh, South Africa under Jacob Zuma, Diane. <coughs> what about the years since under Ramaphosa? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? That is, that is the big question. Uh, we've had the high-level um, review panel report, and, and that was done and released with great fanfare in 2018. And here we are four years, and a Zondo commission later, how many rands of, of those billions have been recovered? Mm. Um, people are talking like a trillion rand that was looted by the Guptas, by state security, via, via, via. Um, and, and our schools and our clinics and our hospitals and our police stations, the roads, the bridges, they're all collapsing. There's not a cent. Um, I mean, as far as even the lights going on at night, um, where are the light bulbs? Where, where are the, where's the money to fix the, the, the leaks? I mean, in, I happen to be in Durban right now, and, and the water's off, as usual. Um, it, it really has become like living when I last went to Angola, you get, you get water once in, in a fortnight for two hours, etc. Um, so the infrastructure's collapsed and the money is gone. So inevitably there's going to be an enormous groundswell of, of fury by people who, who say, just give us the basics. It's, it's not as though we ask for a lot. Um, and, and the fact that state security and crime, intelli well, crime intelligence is just disintegrated um, but that they failed to predict uh, the riots last year, I think, was a huge wake-up call. It was like having a bucket of ice water thrown over this country. The fact that they did not – a 10-year-old on the Internet could have picked up the warning signs. People advertising, oh, come to this protest, come to this protest, we're going to stop. It was all there. And nobody was ready. They were, as the minister, then minister of defence was caught, said we were caught with our pants down. Um, so this does not bode well um, for the, their performance. And every time, well, the president took it and tucked it under his wing. And now there are questions being asked, did state security protect him mm. now with this alleged money laundering issue? Um, that was the warning I gave at the time. Don't let it become what it was previously, and as was revealed in the high-level review panel report, uh, it, it all aimed towards protecting Jacob Zuma. Is that what we're seeing now? It all aiming to protect the current president and not actually um, stopping and stamping out threats to the country, both domestically and internationally. Diane Kolobarnard, DA Member of Parliament, talking all things corruption, politics, state security. Diane, thanks very much for joining us this morning.